Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'll be testing this laptop right here. This is an HP Pavilion DV6 1340ED. This laptop was released back in October of 2009 for around $780 and my model has an Intel Core 2 Duo T6600, 4GB of RAM, a 500GB hard drive and Radeon Mobility HD 4530 graphics which power the 15.6 inch 1366 by 768 LCD display. Let's see what this laptop can still do today. Alright, first off, it was time to take this laptop apart so I could clean it. Taking this laptop apart was pretty difficult, but due to the amount of filth collected in this laptop, it was definitely worth it. Then it was time to also give the outside a clean. After removing about 14 years worth of filth, this laptop looked quite okay again. Now let's move on to installing windows. Like you can see, there is a black hole in the middle of the screen. Luckily, I can use a capture card with this laptop so you won't see it in most parts. Then it was time to install some drivers. Installing drivers went pretty smooth and easy, even though the latest drivers are from 2015. Now let's install some programs. All the programs that I wanted to install could all be installed and I ran into zero compatibility issues luckily. Now it's time to start writing some of the script on this laptop. It was a bit harder than usual due to the black spot in the middle of the screen. This is the keyboard on this laptop. This keyboard has definitely been used quite intensively during its lifetime, seen by the mix of glossy and matte keys as evident. It's still quite comfortable to use, the keys are spaced apart well enough and the travel is also good. I really like the extra numpad that they added. Overall this keyboard is pretty solid. This is how the keyboard sounds. Above the keyboard, you can find some function keys next to the power button. You have a mute button, volume controls and a switch for the wireless functionality. Both the mute and wireless controls both change color when pressed. This laptop has quite some function keys. Some are pretty handy, some I wouldn't use at all. Something that I can definitely appreciate are the media controls and brightness controls. To use a function key, you need to hold the FN key and press the F key. This keyboard has lights built in for the num lock and caps lock buttons. The touchpad on this laptop is a pretty good one. It's big enough and the buttons are good when they work. Due to age, these buttons have worn a bit, causing them to not solidly click every time you press them. You can disable the touchpad by using the button above it. Now it's time to watch some YouTube on this laptop. YouTube is perfectly watchable up to 720p. Sadly, I could not get the speakers to work even after installing all the audio drivers for this laptop. Something that I did find was the start date of the warranty, which is also the date this laptop was purchased, which is 13 years ago. The webcam did work however, so I could review the webcam. Of course, it's nothing special, but it's satisfactory for a 13 year old laptop webcam. Now, let's have a look at the ports on this laptop. On the left side, you can find a VGA port, a docking port, a LAN port, an HDMI port, an eSATA port, a USB port, a Firewire port, a SD card reader, and a remote. Yes, this laptop has a built-in remote you can use to control media. On the front, you can find some status LEDs, and one 3.5mm connector for the microphone, and two connectors for headphones. On the right side, you can find the DVD player, two more USB ports, an opening for a lock, and a charging port. On the back there are no ports, but the HP logo does light up when the laptop is powered on. Now it's time to test out the microphone. The microphone in this laptop is placed near the webcam, and this is how it sounds. 
And this is the microphone test of the HP Pavilion DV6 laptop. It has a stereo microphone at the top near the webcam. And I don't know how it sounds, but probably pretty okay for a laptop. Let's run some benchmarks. First off, Heaven. In Heaven, this laptop got an average FPS of 5.6 and a score of 141. Moving over to Cinebench, in the multi-core test, this laptop got a score of 566 and in the single core test, it got a score of 308. Now let's test out some games. First off, Minecraft. On the lowest settings and with a render distance of 7 chunks, Minecraft was very playable. This laptop got an average FPS of 128, with 1% lows of 11 FPS and 0.1% lows of 1 FPS. There definitely were noticeable lag spikes, but overall Minecraft was perfectly playable. Moving over to Roblox, on the lowest graphical settings Roblox was also perfectly playable. Averaging an FPS of 55, with 1% lows of 12 FPS and 0.1% lows of 8 FPS, made for a smooth and enjoyable experience. Trying out something a bit more graphical intense, Euro Truck Simulator 2 definitely showed the weakness in the GPU, even on the lowest settings and in a resolution of 1024x768, this laptop only managed to get an average FPS of 12, with 1% lows of 9fps and 0.1% lows of 8fps. In some rural areas the FPS could spike up to a playable 30, but in the city with a lot of cars, sub 15 FPS results were pretty common. Testing an even more modern game, House Flipper was actually almost playable. On the lowest settings and in a resolution of 640x480, the laptop kept hovering around 15 to 20 FPS, although the settings were so poor visually that I really couldn't call this game all that playable. Moving on to Bus Simulator 16, this game was also just almost playable. At the lowest settings and in a resolution of 800x600, I got around 10 FPS in game, but the game was also playing at such an unbearable slow pace, which made everything really unplayable sadly. Now let's review the fan noise. The fan in this laptop blows its hot air out the back, which causes it to be pretty quiet while still keeping the thermals at an acceptable temperature. This is how the fan sounds at maximum speed. Alright, time to shut down this laptop and give my final opinion. Do I think that this laptop is still usable? Absolutely. Although performance in games isn't anything to write home about in some heavier titles, running light titles is perfectly doable. Browsing the web is also a good experience and you can even watch some YouTube on this laptop. All the while it doesn't heat up and the fan doesn't get too loud. I also really like the build quality of this laptop. Of course mine isn't pristine but it also shows that it's built super solid. The keyboard feels nice and even though the keys themselves have worn a bit the mechanism under it hasn't worn at all and so the keyboard still feels good to type on after all of these years. The only downside is that the CPU is just about starting to show its age. It isn't super fast while web browsing and this will only get worse as time goes on so I would not advise to spend a whole lot on one of these laptops. But if you can get one for a pretty decent price I would absolutely recommend it. And with that this video comes to an end. Thanks so much for watching, comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!